All right there, today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on programming drum beats in Ultrabeat. Uh, I'm going to make a dubstep style uh, beat as an example, but hopefully this stuff will be applicable to any beats you're making. So let's open up an instance of Ultrabeat. For the moment, let's use multi-output. If you're not sure what that means, don't worry, because I'm going to produce a video uh, straight after this one on mixing drums. And it's important on when you're mixing drums using Ultrabeat to use that multi-output and I'll show you why in that next video. Just for the sake of showing you how I go about things, I'm going to use one of Logic's uh, inbuilt presets, uh, the Ghost Town kit, which is geared towards a sort of dubstep sort of sound already. Uh, obviously though, when you want to get into this properly and start making your own tunes sound individual, you want to start building your own kits using samples, synthesized drums, etc. Um, notice I've got the tempo at about 140 BPM, which is quite a typical tempo for dubstep. What I'm going to do is turn on the sequencer, and if you notice, when I click on full view, which gives me the whole pattern that we've got so far, there's already pattern loaded into Logic. I don't want to use this because I want to build my own pattern from scratch. Now first things first, I'm going to put in the kicks. Um, it's up to you to choose whichever kind of kick you like, but for me I'm going to use kick 2. I quite like the sort of sound it's got. Now notice, if I put in kicks on every beat, as you would in a uh, 4 to the floor house or techno track, we've got quite a fast tempo, 140 BPM is quite a quick tempo. The thing with dubstep is though that the beats are usually in half time, which means that they're actually sound as if they're playing at half that speed, half the speed of 140. So I'm going to clear what I've just done here, put in a kick, and I'm also going to put in a clap and a snare here. So kick, miss a beat, clap snare, miss a beat, kick, miss a beat, clap snare. So that should give us the most basic of uh, dubstep style uh, beats. Pretty boring, I think you'll agree, but a start nonetheless. Now I'm going to look a little bit at these kicks. It's important to remember when making dubstep beats that this is a genre based on UK Garage, which has really, really skittery, um, uneven, swingy beats, as opposed to sort of straight, gridded um, beats that you find in techno and house, etc. So what we're going to do is we're going to place these beat, these kick drums. In places that give a sort of um, almost hip hop uh, feel. Um, so let's just start looping this um, pattern and I'll try to put in a few kicks um, in places where I feel they, they might go well. Okay, I've put a few in, but you'll notice that it feels very um, robotic and pretty unexpressive. That's because all the beats we've got are at exactly the same velocity. That's to say they're being played at the same um, volume. If you were, had a real drummer in to play you a dubstep style beat, the kick drums and the snares and so on wouldn't be all exactly at a perfect volume. They'd be, um, they'd move, they'd change in volume um, to give the pattern more um, emphasis in certain places and not in others. <clears throat> so, for example, these double kicks here, quite often you'll find if a real drummer plays, he'll have one kick at quite a high velocity and the one just before it at a, l at a low one as a sort of lead in note. So, I'm just going to play about with some of these velocities and see if that. And that gives a much more, uh, much more interesting and uh, listenable uh, beat. 
The other thing I'm going to do is start to put a bit of swing in. What swing does is it means that the offbeat um, notes are moved either slightly forward or slightly backwards in order to um, to give a same similar sort of effect to give more expression and feel. So notice as I change. It's quite a subtle change at the moment, but once we start adding in hi-hats and so on, this swing will really make a difference to the, to the beat. So let's go ahead and put in a few hi-hats. In just the same way as the kicks have got this skittery feel, I, want, I really want the hi-hats to lilt around quite a lot. So I'm going to use quite a few of these groups of double sixteenth notes, which are pretty common in UK garage and dubstep alike. And, uh, and I'm just going to play around really until I find something that I feel sounds good. I hope you can hear that as I'm building this hi-hat pattern, I'm trying to create phrases which repeat themselves and also change over time, but which resemble each other. And that should help glue our, our groove together, help it um, form a little story over the course of these two, these two bars that we're creating here. Okay, let's add in a few other bits of high-end percussion. In dubstep, because we've got these slow beats, very often, um, depending on the sort of tune you're making, you'll want quite a lot of high-end energy, um, which uh, adding in more hi-hats and more shakers, more ride cymbals, uh, and so on, makes the gives the beat a far more a far faster feel, even though the tempo stays exactly the same. Now we've got these in, we can play around with the swing to get the right, the feel we want. Of course, from there on in, you can add in loops, you can add in different sounds, bongos, um, you can add in it's nice and dubstep to have these sort of futuristic laser sounds. You can change around your um, your claps or add in more. So OK, 
okay, I'm fairly happy with that, but obviously you can keep building forever. And it's important also that in your song, these beats develop, so more there'll be more going on in high energy parts of the song or in uh, uh, breakdowns, you might have very sparse drum arrangement, but you can keep going forever. As ever, I hope you guys have found this useful. I'll be back soon with a quick drum mixing tutorial, so um, keep the comments coming in. Cheers, guys. Bye.